Hi there. Uh, wow, I feel like it's been forever since I last recorded. And sorry about that. I had uh, finals at my university, so that was kind of my number one priority, just getting through exams. And later on, then now I have to travel. I'm currently in Brazil, so things just got out of hand and I couldn't make videos. But I'm back and hopefully I'll be uploading much more often now, or at least in the beginning of the new year. So yeah, let's get into today's video. I'll be talking about uh, vectors. All right, so to get started, what is a vector? A vector is a collection, which means that it can store multiple values instead of one, okay? Um, collections, they're stored in the heap, which means they have dynamic size and the size doesn't have to be defined at compile time. Okay, um, and before I get started, I just want to point out that uh, Rust has amazing documentation on collections uh, that you should definitely check out. I won't be talking about every single collection. I'll be talking about vectors, strings, and hash maps. So yeah, definitely go check out uh, all the other collections that you, you can you have access to in Rust. Okay, let's get started with the basics. How do we create a vector? Uh, to create a vector, we do let v. And this time we'll explicitly define that we're creating a vector of i32s. And I'm going to say vec double colon new. That's the first way uh, to create a vector, in which we're just creating a vector of empty, uh, an empty vector, sorry. And moving on, you can also create a vector with macros. You can say v1. And now know that I'm not saying explicitly what type we have. So I'm just going to use the macro vec and say one, two, three, and Rust is implicitly defining what type of vector we have. All right, let's add and remove now. Before we can add and remove anything, uh, we have to make the vector mutable, of course. And now the syntax to add is you see the name of your vector dot push and whatever element you want to push. I'm now pushing five and now let's push one. Okay, now let's just see how our vector is looking. You can come here, you can say print, and know that I'm using this specific formatter, and I'm going to pass in a reference to V. Okay, now if we cargo run this, uh, we get 5 and 1. Okay, so now let's remove. An easy way to remove, and that might remind you of stacks, is v.pop. Okay, when you do pop, it just removes the last element that was added to the vector. So kind of like a kind of like a LIFO structure. Okay. So if we were to do this and then print, we would get five. Okay. Now let's push five and one a couple of times. And let's do v.remove0. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to remove the, in, the element at index 0 of our vector. So here you should see after this we should only have 5. Then we should have 5, 5, 1, 5, 1. And if I remove 0, it should start as 5, 1, 5, 1. Okay, so let's print it here. And then let's print it here. Now if we cargo run... You still have the five, in, the 5 initial, and then when we remove that first element, the 5 was gone. Okay, so that's the basics of how you add and remove. Okay, there's two main ways that you can get something in a vector. The first one is by using uh, references. Um, what I mean by that is that you can just uh, come here, and much like you do in a race, you can just say v and then inside of square brackets, the index of the element that you want to access. So in this case, it would just return five. Now, the other way that we can do this is by using a function called get. So I can say v.get and the index zero, okay? Now, the difference between these two uh, methods is that this returns sum five, while this one just returns five. So this one returns an enum variant of option. Okay, so let's run this so you can see it. And of course we get an error. Uh, cannot be formatted by the default formatter. 
So let's just do that. And there we go. We get five and we get some five. All right. Now, another difference that this gives us is that suppose that we want to, instead of accessing zero, we want to access 100. And for now, let's just comment this out. What happens here is the code panics, right? We're, we're reaching an index that's out of bounds. But instead, if we were to use get, and we access an index of 100, instead we just get none. Okay, so that's one big difference. Okay, now I want to leave you with a little bit of insight. Um, let's make this v1 mutable. And right here, let's create a um, variable called r. And we're going to make it a reference to v1, 0. Okay, so this would be 1. Now, what would happen if I did v1.push and I say 6? And then later on, I come here. And I got to learn how to type faster. <laughs> and I print this reference R. Okay, so what's going to happen? What do you think? Pause the video and answer. What happens is that we get an error because, as you remember probably from the I think fourth video or so, from the references and borrowing video, we cannot have a mutable borrow after an immutable borrow has occurred. Okay, so and why is that, right? Like here we just have a reference to the first element, and then here we're pushing an element to the end of the vector. So what does it matter, right? And it matters because what vectors do is that each element is physically besides the other one in memory. So whenever we need to add another element, and that next space in memory to that element is not free, we have to change the entire vector's location to another place in the heap. So it just relocates the entire vector. So this might be happening right here. Uh, the entire vector might be reallocated to another place in the heap. And this, by being an immutable borrow, it would still point to that initial place, which by now might be meaningless. So yeah, there's just a little bit of insight on uh, getting that I wanted to leave you with. But anyway, let's continue with iterating. If you want to iterate through um, variables in an array or vector, you can say i in and just give a reference to your vector. And then here you can just say print, print line i. So what that's going to do, you'll see right here, is we get 5, 1, 5, 1. Okay, so we're accessing each element individually. Another way to do the exact same thing is by doing a 4. But instead of passing the vector itself here, we can say 0 to v dot length, which gives us the length of the vector which in this case is not included, right? It goes, then it would go from zero to V length minus one. And instead now we do V I and reference. And we get the exact same thing. Okay, this is just um, useful for when you wanna keep track of which index you're at. And the last topic of today's video is how to create vectors with different types in them. And uh, you do that with enums. I'll code it real quick, I'll speed up the footage, and I'll talk about it when I'm done. All right, 
So what I did is I created an enum uh, called type and I created two variants, integer and string. Uh, I just gave it a debug so we can print it. And later on I create a mutable vector v2 and I push um, this int and this string. And you'll notice that this doesn't give me any errors, which I can run and you see that this print is right here. So we have an integer three and a string okay. And if you want to get the specific value and not the enum variant, you can always just use match and, and then get the value like that. Okay, so it's pretty much how you do it. Um, I think this will be it for this video. So yeah, um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm hoping to be around more often now and posting more videos. So I hope you'll stick around for some cool Rust content. And yeah, not sure if you celebrate holidays, but if you do, happy holidays and I hope to see you soon. Bye.